February of 2018, I put out a video called Select Aquatics Presents, uh, Building an Automatic Water Chain System and Keeping Rare Fish. And in it, I described how to build the external loop uh, water ch uh, siphon device um, and how to put the system together that's been working here now for about 20 years. And I've been fussing with that system and trying to improve upon it since I first built it in 2000. Then in April of this year, 2019, I put out a video called Select Aquatic Presents, uh, Central Sumps, Earning a PhD in PVC. And um, in that, I took some of the concepts a little bit further um, and built a much more higher uh, uh, water flow type sump um, and, and aquarium system for, 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 you know, for, for keeping higher uh, water quality fish. Well, anyway, there's a number of things in all of those that really had always been on my mind and that I've, my brain's been chewing on. And so I put together a rack that I described in the last video, the uh, uh, Fish Tour 2019, uh, uh, um, where I called it my dream rack. Well, that rack had a couple of small issues, a couple of little things, some tweaks that had to be made, but the fish did amazingly well on it right away. Um, and that rack has been running now for about three months. And uh, uh, following at the end of this video, we'll show you a lot of the fry that's been produced since that rack was going. But anyway, I went ahead and made corrections to that rack and then built a second one. And then this video is on the building of that second rack where all the little issues are dialed in. Uh, it's now been running uh, for about two weeks since this uh, video is being made. And uh, the fish are phenomenal. Uh, those in the opening sequence that you saw were all taken on this, on the new rack that was just set up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the color, the growth, everything is just really taken off and most importantly I'm getting a lot of fry production. Now I don't expect anybody who's watching this to go out and build one of these racks. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is because I'm trying to build up my stock because I want to release these again and make them more generally available to everyone uh, as I had done in the past. So I'm working on trying to get them to breed as quickly as possible and to be as healthy as possible when they go out to customers. But if you're someone who wants to breed these as desirable as they are, um, then this is, the, this is one way to do it. Um, and if you decide that you, know, uh, you, you would like to duplicate what I'm doing here, then please write me and I'll be happy to discuss any questions or concerns you have. But the most important thing about this video is that there's a zillion concepts in it that uh, have come up over the last 20 years that I've tweaked and changed and such that you might be able to use with your setup, whether it be only one or two tanks or whatever you want, whatever you've got going. So, um, de and definitely if you've got thoughts, you can always uh, email me at selectaquatics at gmail.com. Soon I'm going to be getting my numbers up and I'll be posting Select Aquatics available videos for each of the species that you'll see in this video, um, as well as uh, uh, the you know the, the other vid, the, the 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 fish that were discussed in the last video on the fish tour, and I look forward to keeping in touch. And I hope you enjoy this video. Um, some might consider this a little over the top. Uh, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit crazy, but uh, um, I'm really excited about it. It's been working great. And as I mentioned, I'll include a number of, a bit of footage at the end to show exactly how the fish look on this new system. So enjoy. I will quickly explain how this rack works and why it's so special. We start off with a stand that has three shelves. And in this case, I'm using the six-foot Wayland industrial racks available at Costco. The lower shelf will fit four tanks, three 40-gallon breeders and a 30-gallon, and one of the 40s will be the sump for the entire rack. Tanks are set up on the second shelf and then on the top shelf, and when you're standing behind the rack, the sump is the 40-gallon breeder on the lower left. From the side, the rack is two foot deep, and the sump will have a foam divider and be filled with polyester floss for filtration. The divider is held in place, and the pump is placed in the back to pump water to the tanks above without being seen from the front. A network of fill lines coming from the pump is then set up going into each tank, individually pumping filtered water into each aquarium. To keep up with the flow of water going into each tank, there are two types of siphon drain systems. The first is a double version of the external loop type drain that is used throughout the rest of this fish room, and the second is what I call a U-style type drain. The back of the rack then looks like this, with both the double external loop siphons and the fill lines put on, and the flow of water into each tank is individually adjusted. The valves to do the water change or when the sump is off are added and will be covered in a moment. 
On the front of the rack, the U-style siphons are installed on the outside tanks of the two top rows, and they drain down to the sump. On the bottom row, the U-type siphons are used to drain the bottom tanks toward the sump. The U-style drains are added to all of the tanks in such a way that the tanks on the left-hand side of the rack will drain down toward the drain line on the left, and the tanks on the right-hand side drains will drain to the right. Which direction the tank drains will depend on how the U-style drain is placed in the tanks. The side that is lower will be where the water is going, and the side that is higher will be where water is coming from, from the tank being drained. There's enough duplication between the different siphons that the rack is dependable, and when a siphon does stop, the water level will just rise slightly on that tank to be seen quickly and addressed before it becomes a problem. So how do you quickly and easily do a water change? A water change is easily done by unplugging the pump, turning a couple of valves, waiting until the water change has completed, and then turning the valves back on and restarting the pump. The first thing to do when doing a water change is while the rack is still running, open the valve to the main drain and then turn off the valve going to the bottom row tanks. You do not want water going into those tanks as they would just drain into the sump. The new fresh water will get to the bottom tanks quickly enough when the rack is started back up. Then turn the valves to the PVC lines draining into the sump so that water is no longer getting into the sump from the drains or the line going into the pump. Then unplug the pump and open up the valve to allow tap water to come into the rack. When the water change is done, you would close the main drain and the water line, open up the lines to the sump and to the bottom tanks, and then plug it in. Very little water needs to be added to the sump when it settles in after 5 to 10 minutes, but always make sure that the level is correct before leaving the fish room. Now what makes this rack work is your ability to get the water out of the tanks as it's being put into the tanks through the different siphon systems that I'm about to show you. In my room, um, all of my uh, tanks are set up with this type of an external loop siphon. So this fits over the top of the tank, the tank, this sits on the outside of the tank. Water is pulled through down here with this, just suck it through, and this goes down to the drain. This uh, water then will sit in here, and then as water is put into the aquarium, it will then go into this thing here with the holes in it. Uh, the water level will come up. A water level in here will come up and it goes out and it drains on out to your drainage system. How to build this um, and, and how they're used throughout my fish room is shown in the video Select Aquatics Presents building an uh, automatic water change system. Anyway, most of the, the siphons in my room are like this. This is great and they're dependable, they last forever, yada yada, but the problem is that they don't move a lot of water. Um, they're great for doing uh, water changes when you're you know, running water into a tank for 10 or 15 minutes, uh, well, 10, 12 minutes, but um, uh, they, they don't move a lot of water. So when you're running a sump system, because it's essentially a trickle system, it just the water just trickles over this little loop right here on out. So you would like to have a full siphon going where you have a 100% uh, line of water going out of the tank, if at all possible. So. I didn't know quite how to go about that at first, so I came up with putting two of these siphons together on one unit, and that looks like this. So this fits on the side of the tank, this is where the tank would be, this stuff's on the outside. When they lose their siphon, which doesn't happen that often, um, uh, with these are quite dependable. Um, and so making it so they can be started and stopped really easily, it was important. But the, the reason they lose their siphon is that somehow air gets up into this top loop. So you spend a lot of time thinking about how that can happen. So after a time it became clear that these were great for running a little bit of water into a, into a tank. And I did use these for a 24-7 sump on one set of tanks. But the problem I had and what I wasn't happy with is that if one of these were to lose their siphon for whatever reason, and we'll discuss how that happens here in a, in a moment more thoroughly, um, 
one siphon was definitely not enough and you'd end up with flooding and that kind of stuff with takeover flows. So I knew that I needed to supplement this with something. Uh, this big advantage was that they move a fair amount of water, but they're really dependable. So I came across this type of a siphon on the internet and the original one had this top piece being complete and so that these this piece here would end up sitting way the heck up here and this line would sit over the over the uh, 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 top of the aquarium edge of the aquarium this would fit down into the water the, the uh, <clears throat> a cycle would be started in this inner tube so you'd have a constant uh, flow going through this inner tube and so the water level in the tank you were draining from this one is higher this one is lower the water level between this would want to equalize the water level between the two tanks so if you put this higher side on one tank then that tank would then drain into this tank where this was set up a little bit lower so at first these guys were not dependable at all and when this sat way up high like that, as I was talking about, and also the person didn't have these legs very long. They were, they were kind of short. I forget what his name was. We posted it on the internet. So I went ahead and I lengthened these sections to give you more of a situation where this inner line here is down deep into the water on both sides. And I cut this off so that now this piece, which is holding the siphon, is the, uh, the trick to this whole device. Is sitting closer to the top of the tank and now they're nearly as dependable as those other guys are so when this type of siphon was used in combination with these guys then I moved enough water and any one of the three could stop working and the tank would not overflow uh, or there, there wouldn't be an issue I would come down in the morning and I could see that I have a piece of tape on each tank as to where the water level should be. And the, if the water level is raised up a little bit above that piece of tape in the morning, I know that one of the three siphons has stopped. And then I look and I go ahead and I just restart it. I haven't had a flood since. But I spent a lot of time thinking about, okay, why is it that these lose their siphon? So in this case, as I mentioned before, with these guys, air would form in this top loop. And this guy here, somehow, air would form in this top loop. So air has to get in there somehow. And the only way for it to get in are in two places, uh, in this end or in this end, uh, in the case with this siphon. Where the water is flowing out, in this case, this is the lower end, so where it's going out is here, chances of air getting into the top here from there are slim. So I'm, my focus, my effort is not real big on... on being careful the air doesn't get in here but somehow air is getting in here where the filter is draining taking water out of the tank so when I first started putting these siphons together I used these types of this type of, uh, of a collection of a strainer where I just drilled a bunch of holes 16th inch holes into the bottom of a half inch piece of tubing these worked great for a long while. If the holes were throughout the whole deal, uh, then it worked good. Um, um, but Java moss, which I use a lot, or Java fern, which I use a lot of, would tend to get their root, uh, get out, if it got, uh, was nearby this, would get the roots into the holes and would root into there. So I have a couple of these strainers with really nice balls of Java fern growing out of them. Um, and the holes would clog up um, for any one of a number of reasons. Um, and I just wasn't happy with, you know, with, with how they were. And when I first started making these, I would have them sitting in the aquarium so that they were horizontal. When they're horizontal, water comes up and it can get into the holes. In that water will sometimes be air or air bubbles, particularly if, like me, you're using box filters in your tanks. They're always spewing air. You don't want one of the box filters near one of these that's sitting horizontal in a tank or you get air in it and it stops the siphon. When I lose my siphon 90% of the time, it's for that reason. So I started to build the siphons uh, so that they were vertical in the tank. And that solved the problem somewhat, not entirely, but somewhat. So that I still have ones that are sitting horizontal. If a tank has never stopped or has never been a problem, I haven't fussed with it. 
But whenever I set up a new tank now, I never set up the, the drain, the strainers uh, in a horizontal fashion. I always strip, put them together vertically, but I was unhappy with the fact that I couldn't move a lot of water because these holes are small and they would tend to clog. So I went then with this. So I started doing this with all of my siphons. These are great. This worked good. The problem with this is that these are made with a Dremel tool, is that when you, when you make it, you've got your Dremel tool, and you're zzzz, and by the time you end up making one of these suckers, which takes you about 10 minutes or so, it takes quite a while, you're covered in PVC dust. And they were such a pain in the butt to make, and when you have like a double siphon like this, and you have two of them on it, and you've got say 10 tanks, you've got to make 20 of them. So I was spending like entire days just making these things and just getting everything covered with dust. So I wasn't real happy with that, but I used these a lot and I put them in the tank uh, vertically and they do a good job of maintaining uh, some dependability in the siphon. So then I thought, wow, you know, isn't there a better way to do this? Well, I was using these with this type of siphons, which were undependable, and their dependability wasn't improving as much as I would like. So this time I went back to the holes, but I made bigger holes, drew a little bit slightly larger holes, and then on the catch things, instead of having them, because initially when I first made these, I had them like this, and I was, that's where I was getting a lot of my dependability stuff. Bubbles would get up in here, air would get up in here, um, and then it would end up getting in down into the, into the, into the tube. So I made a change, put one of these on, and then um, for, for safety, I, 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 just to be sure for insurance, I went ahead on uh, the ones I put into the tanks. This one doesn't have it, but I put holes in here as well. So now, with the water going on around it, it's really unlikely that any air or water gets into these holes and gets up into here. And so that has made these guys quite dependable. So uh, you'll see in a moment how well the rack works with them, and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not really dealing with issues of dependability in the siphons right now at all, which is awesome. Um, and uh, I, I, the, the thing about these is that they're fairly inexpensive, and they can be done very simply. And if there's a problem, you know right to go where, right to, right to where the problem is and how it can be fixed. So anyway, on to the next part of the video. Wondering how you start the siphon on one of these U-type siphon pieces. And we're going to go ahead and want to take this one and uh, 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 stop the siphon on it, and then restart it up and put it back. I'll show you how that's done. So the first thing we want to do is take the strainer off of it. Right off. I'll leave that here. We're just going to lift this guy right on out. We're going to take it over uh, to another spot that I use for restarting these. Okay, so for the best way to do these, uh, the way that I found to do this, well, of course you want a big tank, a bigger uh, uh, body of water to do this with. Um, I had a container I used to use to do this with. But you fill it up and then you restart the site, but then you've got this big body of water that you're just dumping out. So I have this 75 gallon here and it works perfect. So the fish don't bother too much, too much I don't think, I hope. And uh, so before we do this best, I had, this is one and a quarter inch. This is all made of one and a quarter inch PVC. This insert is one half inch PVC. You'll notice I have the uh, edges here angled so that the uh, water gets into it really easily. It can't close off against the bottom of this when it's inserted. So what I did was, I took two one and a quarter inch PVC caps, put a piece of one and a half inch PVC inside, and I have two of them, and you'll see how they come into play here in a moment. So we're gonna take this insert out, so we get water down into, the, into that, and turn this around so that the, all the air gets out of this, out of this uh, insert. Put it in. Then, get the air out of this guy. Gonna put it into this entrance. And this guy then goes into the exit. All done under the water. 
So we lift it out and there's absolutely no air in it. So now we can pick it up and take it and do whatever we want with it and set it aside, do whatever you want to do, but it's never going to lose its sight. So now we'll go back over to the tank. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. We want this tank to drain into this tank. You can see how high this is. The tape is here. And uh, this one is draining on uh, out to the sun. So we're going to put it out down in here. Then I'm going to remove the guy. Draining out. And then remove the one draining in. Out. We are set. We'll check back on it here in another couple minutes and we'll take a look and see how the water level has come down. It's now five minutes later and you can see how the water level has come down to be right where the tape is and the other tank is right where it should be as well. And it'll run like that pretty dependably uh, unless air or something gets into it. This is a photo taken of the rack being replaced when it was new nine years ago. In preparation for this new rack, the making of the double drain siphon started about two weeks before, so the PVC glue would have had a few days to get rid of any fumes. And the same goes for the U-type siphons. So early on a Saturday morning, my friend Cruz, who's been working with me for a number of years, came by to get the tanks taken down, the old rack removed, the new rack set up, and the tanks set back up. He and I worked most of the day. Here the tanks are when they were first placed on the rack and the fish had been in about two inches of water for a good part of the day, but they were fine. By the end of the first day, all the tanks had working box filters, tops, and lights on the tanks. The next day, the double siphons were hung on the tanks, and the PVC drain lines going to the sump were put in. Following that, the fill lines were put in going to all of the tanks. The divider for the sump was simply a piece of foam from a local hobby store attached to a plastic light grate material with electrical ties. The size pump that I'll use to run this sump will be the Lifeguard 6000. Okay, I have the sump built. I don't have the, the pump itself placed into it yet. But you can see the divider is in there with the uh, plastic material, electrical ties around a piece of sponge. It's sitting in front of this brick that I picked up at Home Depot. I use that same style of brick for all my, all my sumps. And it sits there holding that in place. On the other side, there are two other flat bricks in front of the divider and that's where the pump will sit. And it will be hooked up into the, that's the line that uh, carries the water up into the rack. Then it's a 40 gallon tank and this area in the front will be filled with, with floss. I have the two drains set up so you have a valve on each one. Uh, that's a little bit of allowing air in so I don't build up any suctions. Uh, so it can drain freely down toward this other end. This area will be filled with floss right now. It's got some plants in it simply because I'm going to move them into a, uh, uh, a 30 gallon tank that's being resealed to go onto the rack in another place. I wanted to keep them separately to sit for a little bit before I put them in there. So anyway, the next step now is to go ahead and get the pump put in. This is the rack from the front and with the addition of the polycarbonate tops cut the way they were for the rack it was on previously. I'll probably have to get some new ones and cut new tops uh, and some lights on them. It looks somewhat close to how it's going to look in its final form but none of the U-type siphons have been put in yet. I have three open spots on the rack uh, for 20s and 30s that I do have here, but I've got to test them and, and uh, make sure they don't leak, and if they do, I'll have to reseal them. And then they'll just be slid into here and, and uh, included onto the, uh, uh, onto the rack. But right now it's great because those open areas are being used as a work area uh, to get everything done. This is the back of the rack, and the first stage of the work is done. The tanks are now at a point where they can run uh, by doing hand water changes. The water will automatically drain out of the tanks, but you'd have to put it in with a hose. Uh, they have light, they have heat, and they have air. 
the airline was in here before, so that's always been there. But what was added was all of the double siphons were put in, and then the lines to take them down to the sump that isn't yet built is our, our, were put in. The next thing now is to, uh, this tank right here can't stick out like this because this is where the sump pump is going to be. The hose is going to come up. So I'm going to move this tank forward and uh, to let the uh, to let the uh, the fill lines come up and then uh, they'll get put in here over the next couple days and then after the fill lines are done then we'll go ahead and put in the YouTube type the U uh, type siphons uh, from the front okay the rack is got all the uh, uh, U type siphons set into them they've all been primed and set up ready to uh, to siphon uh, the double siphons are all set up and right now everything's from, all quiet from the front this is what it looks like from the front I went ahead and filled the sump up near the top as you can see there because most of that water will get pumped up into the tanks when the sump is turned on so we want to make sure not to run the sump dry we'll top it off with the hose as it settles in to find out you know where where it's ideal this last tank on the bottom uh, right, I'm not going to do that one today. It's off system because I'm going to have to cut that plexiglass a little bit to make the uh, siphon fit. But otherwise, everybody else is ready to go. So we'll go ahead and walk around behind. And then I've gone through and adjusted each of the valves of the fill lines. Um, for example, here. I put them all at about 20 percent, 30 percent. This tank up here is the furthest away from the pump, so I've got it on, on full, and uh, we'll see how how uh, whether or not that's too much going in there. And then down here on the pump, when we first start this up for the first time, we're going to go ahead and make sure that this overflow valve right here is open. So when we plug the pump in, all the water is going to go out, out to here. Nothing is going to go up into the rack. Then we'll turn this back, and then we'll see how the water goes into the tanks. And of course, if we see any spills or leaks or uh, anything going on like that, then we immediately open this back out up and unplug the pump. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that done. So we just plugged the pump in. You can see it's a fairly powerful pump. All the water there is coming out of the overflow. So we're going to go ahead now and start moving this back and forcing the water to go up into the rack. And you can hear it. I won't let any more out at this point. I'm just looking through here for any leaks, any joints that didn't get, didn't get glued. Uh, we'll check out a few tanks, make sure that there's water going in as it's supposed to, and there is. Make sure that our water flow into the 10 gallons is not too much. Cool. Success. How are we doing here? This guy's going good. These guys down here are both going well. Alrighty, well we'll give it a few moments, make sure that everybody is draining into everybody else as it should. Um, this is that tank that I had it open up full bore for. So you can see that it's got quite a bit of flow. So I'm going to open this up a little bit more. That's a little bit too strong. And then I'm going to cut this guy back. Okay, go back and take a look at this one since this is right next door and it's a similar deal and you can see that the water is coming out kind of right there as well. Let's cut it back. Doing this one-handed is a little tricky. There we go. Oh. 
Okay, good. Good, good, good. Then we go across. Those are already cut back quite a bit. All right. So we'll let this run for a while. Keep an eye on it. See how the sump drains down, whether it jumps down to a good level, whether I need to add to it. Okay, it's been running about 10 minutes now. And if you look at the sump, you'll see that the water level is still above the tape. The tape is set so that it's equal to about one inch above the pump in the back of the tank. So the pump is in the back, pumping away, down the bottom there. And you want the water level... There it is. So you want the water level to be above the pump enough so that you don't have to worry about evaporation being a problem or the pump running dry. So the fact that it's been running now for about 10 minutes and that it still hasn't come down to that tape, that's really good news. Because what it means is that if there's a power outage or there's some kind of a power failure, then this sump won't overflow. That when, if you remember when I first started this, the water was only filled to about two inches from the top. So I'm about to take another inch of water out of here to bring it down a little bit. But that tells me that when the power goes out, uh, this sump is only going to fill up to about the uh, uh, two inches or so from the top of the tank and it won't overflow. So that's huge. And so far already everybody's looking like they're perking up already. It's only been, like I say, 10 minutes. So the way that the back of this rack ended up working out is that here on the left hand side of the rack is a line that comes in from the, uh, this is the uh, tap water line coming in, it's a three quarter inch line. Here's the valve to turn the water on and off. We go on down and then the drain line that goes out to the city is right here. And there's the valve for that and that goes on out and goes back to the, uh, to the sewer drain. From this side of the rack line that goes down to the, uh, the, the three tanks and below is right here. So this is the knob that turns off the tanks that go uh, down into the uh, three tanks along the bottom. Here is the sump and the line that comes up from the pump is right here. So you would turn this off to, uh, uh, to close off any water from coming in from above. And then these are the two drain lines. Uh, they go into the sump. And they would be turned off. And then the power cord from the pump itself just comes right on up here and plugs in above and that gets unplugged. And those are the four things that need to be turned to do a water change on this rack.
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or concerns, certainly email me at selectaquatics at gmail.com. I know your time is as valuable as mine is, and so I try to make, I'm, I've got a number of uh, videos in the pipeline and things will be coming out. They don't go as quickly as I might like, but um, I want to make sure that each one I turn out is, is of good quality and that I cover new ground in each one. So I hope you enjoy them, and uh, I will get, I've got the Select Aquatic uh, available videos on the species that I'm uh, getting ready to release this spring, getting ready. So uh, I look forward to keeping in touch. Thanks. Take care.